Hi, welcome to another video. So, today we're looking at something that's going to make browser automation much easier for AI agents. It's called Agent Browser, and it's made by Vercel Labs. This is a headless browser automation CL, I that's specifically designed for AI agents to control web browsers through the command line. It has a fast Rust CLI with a node.js fallback which is just amazing. Now, let's talk about what makes this special. If you've ever tried to automate browsers using Playwright or Puppeteer directly with AI, you know it can get complicated pretty quickly. Agent Browser simplifies all of that by giving you clean, simple commands that AI agents can easily understand and execute. So, let's get right into it and see how to set this up. To install it, you can just run a simple npm command. First, open your terminal and run npm install g agent browser. The g makes it a global install. Once that's done, you'll need to download Chromium, which agent browser uses under the hood. Just run agent browser install, and that's it. You're good to go. If you're on Linux and need system dependencies, you can add the dash dash with depths flag and it will handle everything for you, which is pretty great for sure. Now, let me show you the core workflow that makes this tool so good for AI agents. It's a three-step process that's super simple to understand. First, you navigate to a page using the open command. So, if you want to go to Google, you just run agent browser open and then the URL. Pretty straightforward. Second, you capture the interactive elements on the page using the snapshot command with the dash i flag. This is where the magic happens. The dash i flag means it only returns interactive elements, which is what AI agents actually care about. The snapshot gives you references like at E1, at E2, at E3, for each element. These refs are deterministic, meaning they won't change unless the page changes. This is way better than dealing with complex CSS selectors or XPath expressions. Third, you interact with those elements using the refs you got from the snapshot. So, if you want to click on the search box which has ref at E1, you just run Agent Browser click at E1. If you want to type something, you run agent browser fill at E1, and then your search query in quotes. Chef's kiss. Really good stuff. Let me walk you through some of the most useful commands. For navigation, you have open, back, forward, reload, and close. So, navigating around is super simple. For interactions, you have click, double click, fill, type, press, hover, check, select, scroll, drag, and upload. That covers basically everything you'd want to do on a web page. For getting information from the page, you can use the get text command with a selector to get the text content of an element. You can also get the HTML, get the value for input fields, and get the URL or title for page info. You can also check element states with commands like is visible, is enabled, and is checked. This is super useful for conditional logic in your automation scripts. For screenshots, you can run the screenshot command to capture the viewport or add the dash dash full flag for a full page screenshot. You can also export PDFs if you need that. Now, here's something really cool. Besides using refs, Agent Browser also supports semantic locators. So, Instead of dealing with complex selectors, you can just say what you're looking for in plain English. For example, you can run Agent Browser Find Role button click with the dash dash name flag set to Submit, and it will find and click a button with the name Submit. Or you can use Find Label Email Fill and then your email address, and it will find an input with the label email and fill it with that value. This is kind of great because it makes your automation scripts more readable and maintainable.
Plus, it's more resilient to small UI changes that might break traditional selectors. Agent Browser also supports sessions, which means you can run multiple isolated browser instances at the same time. Just use the dash dash session flag with a name. Each session has its own cookies, storage, and history. So, you could have one session logged in as user A and another as user B running in parallel. For authentication, you can inject HTTP headers using the dash dash headers flag. This is scoped to specific origins, so it's secure. Super useful for testing authenticated endpoints. There's also network control features like request interception, blocking, and mocking. So, you can simulate different network conditions or mock API responses for testing. And if you want to see what's happening, just add the dash dash headed flag to show the actual browser window. Great for debugging. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. If you're using AI coding tools like Claude Code or Verdant, you can set up a skill that gives the AI full context on how to use Agent Browser. This is way better than just hoping the AI figures it out. Agent Browser comes with a skill file that contains all the commands, best practices, and workflows optimized for LLMs. To set this up, you have a couple of options. First, you can copy the skill folder directly from their repo. After installing Agent Browser globally, just copy the skills folder from it into your .clod skills folder. You can use the npm root -g command to find where the global packages are installed. Or, if you want to download it fresh from the GitHub repo, you can use curl to download the skill file directly into your skills folder. Just make sure the folder structure exists first. Once that's done, your AI agent will automatically have access to all the agent browser commands as a skill. You can invoke it using the slash agent browser command, and it'll know exactly how to navigate pages, take snapshots, click elements, fill forms, all of it. Now let me show you how powerful this is when combined with Verdant. If you don't know, Verdant is an AI coding agent that lets you run multiple agents in parallel with isolated Git work trees. It's basically like having a team of developers working at the same time. So, I have Verdant Deck open here. Let's say I want to build an automated testing suite for a web application. Instead of manually writing playwright scripts, I'm going to let the AI do it using Agent Browser. I'm going to create a new task. I'll type something like Use Agent Browser to create an automated workflow that goes to Google and searches for AI Code King. Now watch this. Because we have the Agent Browser skill installed, the AI knows exactly what to do. It's not guessing at playwright syntax or trying to figure out selectors. It's using the ref-based workflow that Agent Browser provides. The AI opens the page with the open command. It also goes ahead and runs a ton of commands. Then it runs the snapshot command with the dash I flag to get all the interactive elements. It identifies the fields, then it fills the form and clicks Submit. But here's where Verdant really shines. While this agent is working on the login test, I can spin up another agent to work on a different test. I'll create a new task to search for NVIDIA stock price. Both agents are working in parallel, using their own isolated sessions in Agent Browser. They're not stepping on each other's toes. One is doing one thing, the other is doing another, and they're both using the same tool, but with different session flags. This is the kind of workflow that used to take hours of manual setup. Now it takes minutes. If you want to take this further, you can create a custom slash command specifically for web automation tasks. Just create a new file in your commands folder. Create a file called webtest.md with the front matter containing the name and description, and then write out the workflow steps you want the AI to follow. 
In the command file, you tell it to use Agent Browser to automate web testing. Navigate to the target URL with the open command. Take a snapshot to get element refs. Interact using those refs. Verify results with the get text command or state checks. And take screenshots for documentation. Now you can just type slash web test and give it a description of what you want to test. The AI has all the context it needs. So, what can you actually use this for? Well, pretty much any browser automation task. You can use it for web scraping and data extraction. Just navigate to a page, snapshot it, and extract the text or HTML you need. You can use it for automated testing. Fill out forms, click buttons, and verify the results. You can use it for taking screenshots for documentation or monitoring. You can even use it for things like automated form filling, price monitoring, or competitive analysis. Although, obviously, be responsible with how you use it. The fact that it's designed for AI agents makes it particularly good for building autonomous web browsing agents that can complete complex, multi-step tasks. Agent Browser has native Rust binaries for macOS ARM64 and x64, Linux ARM64 and x64, and Windows x64. If the native binary isn't available for your platform, it falls back to Node.js, so it works everywhere. Overall, I think this is a really solid tool. The ref-based workflow is exactly what AI agents need. Instead of trying to parse complex DOM structures, the AI just gets a clean list of elements with simple identifiers. The semantic locators are also a great addition for more human-readable scripts. The fact that it's from Vercel Labs means it's probably going to be well-maintained and updated. And the Apache 2.0 license means you can use it freely in your projects. If you're building AI agents that need to interact with the web, this is definitely worth checking out. It's way easier than setting up Playwright or Puppeteer yourself and trying to make it work nicely with LLMs. The integration with tools like Verdant and Claude Code through the skill system is what really makes this powerful. You're not just getting a browser automation tool. You're getting a tool that speaks the same language as your AI coding assistant. There are some downsides. It's still pretty new, so the documentation could be more comprehensive. And it only supports Chromium by default, though you can configure it to use Firefox or WebKit if you need to. But overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.